Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with white bread. That's right, I'm very excited to show you what I think is a pretty close approximation to the white bread most of us grew up eating. At least if you're my age, that is. Okay, for lots of our younger viewers, they may have only seen white bread in reruns of old television shows. But anyway, while I usually do eat the nice healthy whole grain stuff like 95% of the time, a few times a year I do like to make a loaf of this just to remind myself what I'm missing. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And we'll begin by pouring some warm milk into a mixing bowl. And then on top of that, we will sprinkle one package of dry active yeast. And then we'll just let that sit for like 10 or 15 minutes to get a little bit of a head start. And you're really not gonna notice that much happening. Although you might see a few small bubbles forming. And then what we'll do after about 10 or 15 is continue on by adding one large beaten egg, as well as a little touch of white sugar, a little bit of white vinegar, and a little bit of baking soda. Not baking powder, baking soda. We will also need a little bit of salt, as well as a couple shakes of cayenne, which we don't need, but we want. And then we will finish up with some all-purpose flour, and a few tablespoons of very soft, room temperature butter that we've cut into a few smaller pieces. And that's it, we'll go ahead and grab a dough hook and head to the mixer where we're gonna start kneading this dough on low speed. And I say knead the dough, this is really gonna be more of a batter as you'll see. All right, one of the secrets to this loaf of white bread is a very, very wet dough. So we'll go ahead and start this on the lowest speed. And as soon as everything kinda of comes together and looks like this, we'll turn it up one notch. At which point we're gonna give it about three or four minutes or until we have a very smooth, very elastic, and as you can see, extremely wet and soft dough. And then, because this dough is so wet and sticky, we're not going to be able to knead this on the table like we usually do. So all that we're going to do is sort of clean up the sides with a spatula, at which point we're going to cover it and let it rise for about an hour and a half to two hours, or until it doubles in size. And sometimes that only takes like an hour, but when your dough includes things like butter and eggs, sometimes the rising takes a little longer. But anyway, this is what mine looked like about two hours later. And fair warning, it's going to be really sticky, so don't do this. Okay, usually we deflate it with our hand, but not this time. Here, we're actually going to use a buttered spatula to scrape this right into our loaf pan. Which, by the way, as you might be able to see, has also been generously buttered. And we will go ahead and transfer all that dough in. And no, this is not slow motion. This dough is in no hurry to go anywhere. But eventually, after what seems like a really, really long time, we'll get all that transferred into our pan. At which point we'll use our spatula to sort of spread that out and distribute it as evenly as possible. And then what we'll do once that's been accomplished is go ahead and sprinkle some flour over the top, which is done simply by holding a couple tablespoons in your hand, which you then shake, which lets the flour gently escape between your fingers. So we'll go ahead and dust the top, at which point we'll give that a little gentle pressing, just to sort of flatten and smooth that top surface the best we can. Okay, usually when we knead and shape a loaf, we sort of roll it over so it has a nice smooth, even skin on top. But we can't really do that here. So we'll have to settle with a little pressing, which as you'll see works out just fine. And then once that's set, what we're gonna do for the next 30 minutes is absolutely nothing. We are just gonna let that rise in the loaf pan. And as you can see, roughly 30 minutes later, mine had risen all the way to the top. And then what we're gonna wanna do, besides making sure our oven is preheated, is go ahead and take a sharp knife or razor and attempt to slice the middle of this loaf, which is not gonna be easy since this is so soft and sticky. So I'm actually gonna slice this a few times in both directions, just to sort of somehow open up the center of this loaf. And even though that is certainly not a clean cut, we've still created a weak point. So as our bread rises in the oven, it's gonna stretch and pull apart from the center out. Whereas if we didn't do those cuts, it might stretch and rupture in a place that's not as aesthetically pleasing. And then speaking of appearances, before this goes in the oven, we're gonna brush the entire surface with melted butter and a good amount of it. Whoops, I just popped a little bubble. That's okay, don't worry. Like almost everything involving dough, once it bakes, it always looks amazing. And by the way, some bakers like to use an egg wash here or some even use milk. So if you prefer those instead, go ahead. I mean, you are after all the vanilla ice of making sure the top looks nice. But as far as taste and appearance goes, I do like the butter. And that's it. Once the top's been brushed, that is ready to transfer into the center of a 350 degree oven 
for about 30 minutes or so, or until it's baked to a beautiful golden brown, and hopefully looking something like this. And then, very important, as soon as this comes out, while it's still piping hot, we want to brush it once more with melted butter, which is not only, of course, going to taste good, but it's also going to give that top crust the soft, supple texture we expect with a classic white bread. And then what we'll do once that's been brushed is let it cool in this pan for exactly 10 minutes before carefully removing it to a rack where we will let it cool completely, not almost cool, all the way down to room temp. Okay, if you want warm bread, just toast it. But if you slice this open piping hot, a lot of moisture is going to escape and your bread can dry out. So I went ahead and let mine cool for at least an hour before I went ahead and sliced in. And as usual, I was extremely happy with what I saw. All right, while these bubbles might be slightly larger than we might remember from that white bread of our childhood, the taste and more importantly texture are gonna be remarkably similar. All right, we're talking very light, airy, and tender. And again, the secret was that very, very wet, almost pourable dough. Oh, and if you're wondering which specific childhood bread I'm referring to, well, I can't give brand names. So you'll just have to wonder. But anyway, I went ahead and cut a couple more nicer looking pieces. And I spread on some butter so I could go in for the official taste. And all of a sudden, just like that, I was seven years old again. And it's not like I have anything against whole wheat bread. But sometimes I just don't want the vitamins and nutrients and fiber to get in the way. And for a change of pace, enjoy a piece of bread that's barely there. And as good as that plain buttered piece was, this next piece that I toasted and then buttered before spooning on some jam, was even more incredible. All right, there's buttered toast and jam, and then there's homemade white bread buttered toast and jam, which is like an entirely different thing altogether. And because the flavor is so neutral, and the texture borderline non-existent, that's what makes it so great for things like sandwiches. In particular, for example, this California Club, which is why, even though I live in the land of the whole grain artisan loaf, I do like to take the occasional flight back to white. And I'm thinking you might just want to take a trip as well. Which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.